I've had many, many requests from people online to uh, have me give them instructions on how to decapsulate uh, brine shrimp eggs. I I purchased mine from Brine Shrimp Direct. I buy it by the pound. Uh, a pound will last you a long time. And depending on what you're doing, I a lot of people say, well, why don't you just buy them already decapsulated? If you buy them already decapsulated, they won't hatch. Whereas if you buy them in their cyst form and decapsulate them yourself, you can hatch them right afterwards. So I'm just going to give a quick tutorial on how to decapsulate brine shrimp eggs. Simple, once you see it done once, you're going to wonder why you didn't do it before. And there are people that ask, well, why do you decapsulate? It's a lot easier to feed if you don't have to avoid the eggshells. And the importance of avoiding the eggshells is some of the little buggers, your fry, they will develop some type of a penchant for just eating the shells and leaving the rest, the, the live baby brine shrimp, just swimming around. I don't know why they do it, but they can't digest it, and it blocks them up, and they die. So that's why I personally decapsulate. If you like fighting with the shells, you go for it. I don't like fighting with them, so I'm just going to show you how to do it real quick. Start off. Any container will work. This is a two-liter bottle. Just a chunk cut out of it. A cup to make it stand up. If you're not going to do too many, you can just use a smaller version of the same thing. If you don't have access to a plastic pot bottle, you can always use an old mason jar. I used to use this one to, de to hatch my brine shrimp in. It's not a big deal. The biggest, the biggest thing you got to look out for is that you have a spot where you can put your air stone down in and it brings everything up, keeps everything in suspension because it's the act of the eggs knocking against one another along with the bleach that sloughs off the eggshell and you're left with just the sac with the embryo, embryo inside of it. Uh, and that, when you're done, you can just feed directly to your fish or you can continue on and hatch them and you'll have baby brine shrimp in 18 to 24 hours. So without further ado, start off I use about a cup of ice cold water and I say ice cold because the chemical reaction between the bleach and the eggshell is an exothermic reaction which means it creates heat so we've got to avoid overheating the eggs because we'll cook them and they will die. So we start off with about a uh, cup of water, pour that right in. I usually add a couple ice cubes. That's just to keep it cold. Then, however many eggs I want to uh, hatch at the time. Right now I don't have very many babies swimming around that need eggs, so I'll just do a couple of scoops here. And this is what the eggs look like prior to decapsulating. Oh, let's do a fourth scoop. It's very important that you keep these in the freezer after you purchase them because if you don't keep them in the freezer they're not going to live as long. Some people say, oh I watch this guy, he had some that were 30 years old. Yeah, he found them in the back of his freezer. Remember that part. You've also got to keep them dry. Now that we've got them in the fresh water, no salt added, Nothing like that. We're just trying to rehydrate the eggs. Now we take our air stone and our air line and we dump it in here and we forget about it for 40 minutes. Now, when we're done 
rehydrating them and we've decapsulated them, I just use a, dispo or a reusable coffee filter. You can use disposable ones if you want. I choose to use one with a really, really tiny, tiny mesh. You can see through it, but it's small enough that the brine shrimp eggs don't fit through it. This also comes in handy when you're feeding. I just take and I pour right through into the sink, of course, not on the floor. My wife would kill me. And then rinse them a little bit with some fresh water to get the brine off and right to the fish tank and bloop. Just that simple. And you got happy, healthy, fat little angelfish. Well, I have angelfish and guppies, so those are the ones I choose to raise to each their own. It doesn't matter what, whether you're raising zebra fish or betas. Perfect food for them. Baby brine shrimp. Uh, I'm not sponsored by anybody, but I get mine usually from brineshrimp.com or brineshrimpdirect.com. They are awesome. Just type that into your search in, your search browser, brine shrimp, brine shrimp direct.com. It'll take you right there. I might even be able to put a link in the uh, doobly-doo down below. So, if you have any questions about it, this is the cheapest batch of brine shrimp eggs they sell. Okay, it's just the culls or whatever. I'm not worried about it because I'm decapsulating them. Once these eggs are decapsulated, the fish can eat the whole thing. You don't have to worry about you getting caught in their guts or anything like that. They can eat it. So if it doesn't hatch, you're still getting 100% feed. And you don't have to worry about separating out the unhatched eggs and the floating eggs and everything. You don't have to worry about any of that. You just feed your... Now, we've gone almost 40 minutes with our eggs rehydrating. Now, what we want to do is we want to get ready to add our bleach. And our bleach, we will add a little bit more than we've added water. I usually go a little over a cup. You can use less, but it'll take longer for it to, uh, for the actions that are needed to happen. <clears throat> we got another minute and 44 seconds. Now, when we go to hatch, I just use regular non-iodized salt. Salt that does not contain iodine. Iodine will kill your brine shrimp. So, I just get the cheap stuff from the store. I use one tablespoon per two cups of water. So that's about two tablespoons for four cups of water. That's what works best, I found, for the two liter jug if you're going to use that. And once we're, once we're done with, with the, the bleach, we run it through our strainer and rinse it off real good till we can no longer smell bleach. We put it back in the jug after we rinse the jug out, of course, and add our four cups of water and our two tablespoons of non-iodized table salt. I said before that it was about, about 40 minutes is what we wanted to uh, the length of time we wanted our stuff in about 40 minutes. Now watch the color. It's going to go from this really nasty grayish yuck mud color to this nice orangey, orangish color. The color it will end up it will be a little darker than this here. And I take and put in a drop or two of vegetable oil to keep it from foaming up. That just knocks the foam down. It's all about surfactants. I just use regular vegetable oil, generic stuff. Not going to hurt your, your brine shrimp. If any of, it get, any of it gets into the water column, the brine shrimp will eat it. And in turn, your fish will get to eat it. It's food grade, not a problem with any of it. Now if you get any eggs climbing up the side here, I just rinse them off with uh, a little bit of airline tubing. And 
some fresh water. Just that simple. This is how we do it on the cheap. Now a can of uh, brine shrimp eggs from brineshrimpdirect.com will cost you anywhere between, depending on if it's on sale, between $45 and $50 with shipping. So it's very, and it lasts a long time. I've, at any one time, I'm feeding probably a thousand baby angelfish, and a pound will last me about two to three months. Like I said, it all depends on how much how much you're feeding, and and how often you're feeding, and how many fish you're feeding. But if we watch the color, the color is slowly changing. It's been in there about two minutes now, with the bleach. And what we're looking for is a little bit better than an orangish color. It usually takes four to five minutes. Remember I said that this has to be kept cold. I'm just going to drop another ice cube in there just to be sure it stays cold. It's still cool to the touch, but I've reached up here and grabbed it and it was extremely warm. Almost uncomfortably warm. And that's when I experienced colony collapse on my, on my batch of brine shrimp eggs. So you can mix it up a little bit. You can already see the color is starting to change. It's actually changed quite a bit. About another minute. Like I said, it's the action of the, the eggs rubbing against each other and the chemical reaction between the uh, sodium hypochlorate and the eggshells. And that's what strips the eggshell off of your brine shrimp eggs. The hardest part of this whole thing is waiting. It's all a time game. The actual work that's involved is probably 10 minutes worth of work. And it is so worth it. I will never go back to hatching brine shrimp the, the original way ever again. Even if you've got the fancy hatchers with the little bleeder on the bottom, you can still do this. You can still decapsulate your eggs. And it just makes it so much easier in the end than having to deal with all the, the nastiness of separating out your eggs and or your live baby brine shrimp from the eggshells. Very cost effective too, not very expensive at all. Just a couple dollars for the bleach and a little bit of your time. And now we see it's turned to a nice beautiful orangish color. It's not as bright orange as this because these baby brine shrimp have already hatched and they've already used up some of their yolk sacs so their color is going to be a lot lighter than these eggs are. Now we shut our timer off, pull this out, throw it in our rinse bath over there. Now I'm going to turn you around to the sink. Just a simple quick rinse you got a nice sprayer like that, that works awesome. And we just pour right through our right through our reusable coffee filter and we rinse the bleach down the drain.
Remember the color that the eggs were before? Now they're a rich, deep orange color. They're no longer that nappy grayish, brownish color. Now we turn back over here. I just use a teaspoon and I scrape them all up into the into one corner right on the teaspoon nobody tell my wife that I'm using her measuring spoons like I said about two tablespoons of non iodized salt about two tablespoons then we get lukewarm water here's two cups of the lukewarm water I rinse them in ice water to get rid of the bleach but the lukewarm water will do just just fine for patching and everybody says oh you gotta have Got to have them at 80 degrees to get them to hatch. No, you don't. No, you don't, especially when they're decapsulated. There's a lot less energy needed to be put out by the little critter to get out of the egg. So you don't need as much heat. use an air stone. I just use a piece of rigid airline tubing and stick it right in. That agitates it, keeps them moving, keeps them from clumping up and, and forming a, a concretion in the bottom. It'll turn to like uh, a soupy goop at the bottom if you don't agitate. Best to end. They also need oxygen. They are a living, breathing creature. So. more cups of lukewarm water. You don't want hot water. You don't want ice water for this. But lukewarm water. And in 18 to 24 hours, you've got freshly hatched baby brine shrimp. I just leave them right here in the kitchen, right next to the stove. I have a very tolerant wife, by the way. And that's it. And tomorrow, you'll have baby brine shrimp. Like I said, you can take, there's a little bit left in the bottom there. You can take your already hatched baby brine shrimp, pour them through here, rinse, let the water come out of them. All the brine is out. Rinse them in the sink and Got some hungry guppies over here, so we're going to feed some guppies. Now these eggs, they were just in bleach less than a minute ago. You all saw that. Once you rinse them off, they're perfectly safe to feed to your fish. And my fish love them. I don't have to worry about them getting caught in their stomachs or in their in their intestines. And it's perfectly safe to feed to your beauties. If you have any questions, just leave them down below and I'll try and answer as many as I can. But uh, that's, for the most part, the gist of it all. Okay? Uh, we'll see you guys later. Any questions, like I said, just... Leave them below and I'll try and answer them. Bye, folks.